Okay, can everyone just give me a quick yes on that they can see the screen in the background? I have a, a TOS screen open, and then I have a um, and then I have the stock chart screen open. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's start off this seminar. This, this session is being, this is not a session, it's a, it's a mid-market seminar at 3.07 uh, p.m. on uh, June 30th, 2015. Um, this is purely for informational purposes and uh, educational purposes and not for any financial solicitation or gain. So let's kick off, guys. Let me get straight to the point here. We're at a major inflection point in the market. We have a lot of things that are moving and they're very fluid. Not to mention the fact that the market is completely being run right now by the machines that Eddie very eloquently described, uh, explained in the form of the matrix. And if you want to read that, go to the chat room, scroll up, and read what he said about uh, the, the, the thresholds where the liquidity is sucked in and out and uh, all that such. Okay? Now let's see what it means uh, to us out here um, to, and, and what's going on live behind us. Um, here's a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I think this is going to explain everything pretty clearly. I've drawn these, I've shown these, but let me go ahead and explain this. Okay? If anyone can hear me clearly, just go ahead and put it in chat. I'll try to keep an eye on that. Um, I will move from here. Fair enough. Now, look at this very, very carefully. The screen is pretty uh, easy to read, and I just want to walk you guys through it. We have a major uptrend line from October 15th lows, the pivotal low. Okay? You've heard me say that a do, you know, dozens of times. Here's the, here, is, here is the uptrend line that I am drawing. You can certainly draw a little bit. Uh, um, you, you can take a little bit of uh, technical freedom and draw it like this too. This was another pivotal low, uh, which was just a few days ago. Um, one second. All right. Right there. Right there, and that was... Uh, and that was, look at the box on the left-hand side, the 15th, the, you know, the infamous 15th of the month. The bottom line is this, and this is what I'm looking at. I'm being very patient. I'm not inundating people with just random comments all through the day. Just being patient, and I want to make the big money, and that's the bottom line. So far, we have had some very powerful movers off the bat since yesterday. I don't need to remind you, the Netflix of the world, Apple's moving fantastic, Tesla's moving up 8 bucks, going back towards the 275 level. Price line, forget it. I mean, the thing is at 42, and the best part is when I show you the chart, it doesn't even look anything. In other words, it's just a blip on, on, the, on the map because it's fallen uh, uh, so rapidly. Amazon starting to move. I like Facebook, which is kind of flattish, but okay. Twitter is on fire right now. Uh, we're looking at uh, Goldman Sachs, and I'm not playing at this moment because of the financial uncertainty out there, and those are the direct ones that get hit, but that's also looking good. And then, of course, we have our smattering of our uh, uh, terrific biotech winners. We have Juno, uh, which is looking fine, even though it's pulled back from the 80 level. The reality is that it's still up 15%, and uh, you know what? The charts look fine for now. Um, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, Jazz, that's up five. We have Regeneron, that's up four. And of course, we have a smattering of the others that we play time to time. Ziop, Z-I-O-P, Zio Pharma, is a beneficiary of this Celgene billion dollar investment into Juno. That's up about 5%. That's a nice swing trade on the move. Um, and then, and, and, you know, we, like I said, that's, that's a quick smattering of the ones that I'm looking at uh, currently. Here is a couple of things that you guys all have to keep in mind. You don't have to agree with me, but that's just the way I, I look at things. Number one, if we don't have patience, we're going to miss out on this big move. I don't know when the big move is, but I'll tell you around what time it's going to happen. The really big move, in my opinion, is going to come sometime within tomorrow and Friday, and, oh, well, Friday is a holiday, and Monday. Okay? So if we have calls for this week, we obviously need to shift them out by tomorrow, um, unless you're playing with very small lotto type of things, which are expiring on Thursday, because Friday being a holiday, a stock market holiday, you'll have to shift it into next week. There's a huge referendum vote that's coming up over the on, on Sunday, right? On 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 uh, July um, 5th, and July 5th uh, is uh, is 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 a Sunday. So bottom line is 
from, and this is where that behavioral predictive game theory stuff comes into play, the political macroeconomic game theory. It looks like the forces that uh, of, of the Greek political system that want to stay within the framework of the European Union are very much in control right now. Keep in mind, and I mentioned this in the sessions earlier on this week uh, to, some, uh, to some of my members, that um, this is no longer a game of you know, whether the money's coming or the money's going. This is a game of political survival. The Syriza party, which is Cyprus, the guy who's in power right now, is really struggling to stay on power. He's realizing that the tide is turning, and, and, and they're basically talking. As we, as we sit here and watch these headlines, there's intense negotiations. Forget negotiations. There's a lot of talking going on back and forth. You could be hearing announcements across, you know, at any given time, middle of the night, you know, just all over the place. So the reality is that, the cha that what we have to measure from a risk-reward standpoint is where are we right now with the U.S. market? What is our risk-reward uh, probability over the next uh, uh, week, two weeks, if not sooner? And that's really what we're concerned about, right? Um, and of course, we're being you know, moved around by Puerto Rico, by Greece. Um, China seems to have stabilized quite a bit, uh, so we're okay with that. So let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, as we can see, and I'm going to zoom in. We have two major levels that we have to contend with. One level is 17,000, and one level is pretty much around here what we're looking at, which is 17,560, and uh, what was the low for today? Today's low was uh, 17,000, today's low was 17,576. So let's zoom in a little bit here, okay? So if you look at pattern symmetry, it's pretty obvious that what's going to happen is slip, slide, do whatever you need to do, but it looks like this level here, I'm going to get the highlighter, is probably going to hold. It doesn't mean we can slip another 100 points and come to the bottom of this barrel, of this uh, barrel, I mean this rectangle, uh, uh, which is around 17,550. Don't panic. The reality is that the real panic really starts if we break below uh, 17,550. You know, mark that on your thing. So roughly another 75 points from here. If we slip below this, there's nothing here. We're going to fall straight down another 500 points to 17,000. The chances of that happening are low, but you know what? Never say never. We have very strong support here at these levels on the Dow, and, uh, and, I'm, and, and I'm focusing on them clearly. Now, what are the indicators that are telling me that this situation of a 500-point drop which is still there, mind you, okay, will not happen over the next 24 to 48 hours going into July 4th weekend. Well, not only is the fact, you know, I'm not going to pull that July 4th card and say, oh, it's July 4th and we're not going to do that. Let's look at some simple internals, simple internals, which have worked very well and have delivered the goods big time, right? You generally, if you look at where, where we are right now and you buy at these levels um, at every given time, almost 100% of the time, um, where you where you buy these lows, okay? You make money. So the stochastics, which are in deep oversold territory right now, printing around four uh, below the 20 mark. The red line is the 20 mark on the RSI. Uh, is going to, it, it one with other. It's going to get it's going to move this this way. Now whether it moves halfway up here and then collapses like it did here. Okay, where did here, or whether it makes a move up towards this end, which would be a large rally, um, we don't know yet. But therein lies, you know, what trading is. But we are oversold, and if 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 this if this uh, uh, my calculations work out, we are in for a powerful rally. Now this re will require patience. This will require traders not to keep on looking at their P and Ls every five minutes. Because you look at your P&L every five minutes, you're never going to make the real money. I'm telling you that right now. Okay? That's just the way it is. So you've got to swing this move that we're seeing in front of us. And you've got to have to take, in, take some sucker punches over a short uh, uh, time frame, meaning uh, you know, uh, uh, a day or so, in order to get the big money. The algos are not going to make it easy for you guys to all buy in at the bottom and make a sweet, you know, and have a huge V-shaped move, which has never happened. Now, you might say, hey, why is Frank saying... Uh, Clue is saying it never happened. It happened here. No, it didn't happen here because what happened was the biggest money is made over a 24 to 48 hour period. Look at this candle, fat, fat candle. I always say this. I always follow it. The biggest money is made over the next 24 to 48 hours. We're only up 27 points on the Dow, yet we have solid gains across the board. Solid, okay? Solid gains across the board. So no complaints here. 
So bottom line is you got the 24, you got this uh, uh, big candle, and then you get another whoop down. This whoop down that you're looking at uh, right there, right there, this red candle is most probably what's going to happen again. You know, it might happen by, uh, uh, you know, over the next 48 hours. But the reality of the thing is that if you, if you, if you follow the internals and you have the discipline to basically scale in, not lump in all at the same time, then you are going to benefit from this move. These are the type of moves that give you the massive money. These are the type of moves where you buy the $2 calls and you sell them at $10. And it's a fact. Now, most of you have never done that because most of you haven't had the discipline to hold it. So that's not my problem, to be honest with you. That's your problem. You've got to work it out in your head whether or not you can handle this volatility. So this move is coming. However, it's going to be choppy, and it is still going to move higher. So if you want to do it like this, then you, I know in, uh, from what I have seen that we are moving back towards the 18,000 level. And if we're looking at 18,000 as a benchmark, which it normally acts as a magnet, and if we don't break 17,550 on the Dow, then we are looking at another 370 points from here, which translates into roughly, you, can, you guys can all write this down. Uh, bear with me one second. Okay, um, I want to stop for a quick second. Is everyone following what I'm saying? I want to hear a yes on the chat. Great. Absorb it fast because I'm moving at speed here. We are at 320. I am, I'm in no rush. I'm not selling anything, so it doesn't really matter, right? I'm going to be a buyer from this point. I am a swing buyer from this point. You know what that means? It means that I'm scaling down, and I'm, whatever chance I get, I'm buy, buying my select plays. It's all out there. And... I'm going to stick to it. If we drop 100 points and my stops get triggered, um, let, let, let that be. But I'm not too worried at this level based on what I'm seeing. Okay? And I don't expect everyone to agree with me, but that's fine with me. So here we are, very oversold, and we are going to turn. There is no definitive turn. You want a de definite turn, then the definite turn is when you cross over, when these lines cross over. By the time these lines cross over, we are going to be up probably 100 to 200 points. That's just the way it goes. By the time this line crosses, crossed over, we already had this massive bar. You want to be the chaser buying into confirmed moves? Well, guess what happens? You're going to see a big whop down on, the, on this red bar if you wait around for these um, uh, algo confirmations. Algos know very well how you guys are thinking, how all of you are thinking, okay? And, and, and they will smack you. Okay, just letting you know. So you have to be early, and, and, and like I said, there is a range here we're playing, 17,550 and 17,584. So we are good for another 75-point swing, which could basically whiplash people around. I don't care. I'm buying. Unless, unless we break 17,550, 17,540, let's say, below this box, and it's all for everyone to see on the Twitter feed, then in that case, I'll short like nobody's business. Because at, on, at that point, I repeat again, there is nothing to stop. There is nothing to stop this move down to 17,000, in which case I'll be buying with both hands down. And that's the time that I'll deploy more than 60% of my trading capital into the market. I generally play with about 40% in the market, as, you, as, as people who have followed me know. Now, this is the pattern. This pattern here, you know what? It could happen. I'm just passing it on to you. Um, and, and, and the fact is uh, that we have to be careful on that. Now, how do, how do, we, how do we basically ben uh, how do we protect ourselves? Well, I don't know if there's any protection during volatility. Go out there and buy some hedges. I did buy hedges. Yesterday's hedges worked out fantastic. The Russell hedges went from my average cost was around four, five, six bucks. You know, overall, they went to $30. I was out of it mostly in the mid-20s. You want any complaints about that? No. You know what? So that's what you do. You buy some hedges. You want to. You want to feel. Uh, you want to protect your long positions. You'll never. You know. If you want to buy an equal hedge, well, you got to put the same amount of money on the hedge side. And you know, when the market really blows up, like as in goes higher, those hedges are going to go to zero, and you're not going to feel too good because you know, you had you had an equal hedge. So I wouldn't buy an equal one to one hedge. I would do a three to one where you have a three to one long bias, and and uh, and you one third of your money can be towards the hedge. Okay. So just passing it on to you. So. What do I see here? 
as I explained to you. I am seeing these candles fighting. We have, let's zoom in here, okay? It's a micro analysis. We are starting to see, look at this, okay? These are going up and down, up and down. See that? We're going up and down. That's margin selling. That's margin selling. Remember, this big move down here, we lost uh, 600 points, okay? 600 points, not a joke. So we lost 600 points. You don't think they're margin calls? There are large institutional margin calls. Now, here's the difference here. We don't have that many retail margin calls, as in the individual investor. You know why? Because the indiv individual investor was pretty much absent from this big move up on the market and these big moves up on the market, and they never took on any real margin to buy stuff because they're all, you know what, scared stiff. And that's fine with that. So this is a technical sell-off, technical sell-off, and institutional margin is there. Well, uh, calls are there. So those are the ones which have to be depleted. In other words, they have to be satisfied. So as they're being satisfied, this thing is going to go up and down. You're going to get up here, 17,700. You're going to come down here, and you're going to maybe come down to the lows of the day, and like, oh, my God, it's all over. You hear this, you know, same old stuff. But you know what? I just told you the levels you have to watch. You have to watch this level, 17,550. We break below 17,550 by any large magnitude. We are down to 17,000. And at that point, not at that point, somewhere in here, I'm going to be out there saying buy hedges. In fact, I might just put some out there right now that you buy a couple of spy hedges just in case we go down. So that's it. Now, another internal that I'm watching, um, uh, well, this is the MACD. We are starting to see a turn here on the on-balance volume, okay? This is real-time four-hour charts. It's got a more of a swing feel to it, right? So we're starting to see a turn on that. I mean, money's starting to come in there. Could be just pure short covering. If we look at these uh, histograms here, we can see that it's it's this this line here is the Bollinger. This thing it's outside the Bollinger. Anytime it comes outside the Bollinger, it'll whip back straight in, and that's pretty much what's going to happen. Just letting you know that. All right. Now let's take a look at the hourly chart here. One hour chart. Okay. Now this is uh, this is the one hour chart, and the one hour chart is. Uh, let me just go back. Did I freeze? No, I didn't freeze. Okay. So let me get all these lines out. Uh, let me get this uh, line out of here. Oh, I forgot to mention on the four-hour chart where I think the market's going. Well, I didn't forget to mention because I've shown this before. Generally speaking, this, this slightly downward sloping 50 and the 34 is going to act as a magnet as we sweep back into the in, in, within this Bollinger Band. Remember, this is the Bollinger Band, right? This is the Bollinger Band. There's a couple of things going on here on the four-hour chart. Um, actually, I'll show you on the daily chart. On the daily chart, you know, these, these lines are a little bit, uh, they're a little worrisome because this, uh, um, we don't seem to have, uh, it, it looks like, you know, it, we might break a little bit, you know, on the daily. That's what it's telling you. I'm, I'm I was talking to you earlier about the 20, next 24 to 48 hours going into maybe the first part of next week. So the point is we are at the bottom end of the trading range. We are at these support levels that I told you, but these histograms, are, you know, um, if they fall a little more, then this is going to get pushed down. Histograms measure selling pressure. So if the selling pressure increases, then obviously we're going to you know, fall, fall um, further, and uh, that you know we could come halfway down here, maybe 17,360, and we don't necessarily need to fall all the way to 17,000. Now here is something I'm noticing: is despite this large drop, the 50 and the 34 seem, still seem to be moving sideways. We haven't seen any major curvature on these things here, which is signifying that we are on a confirmed downtrend on uh, on the on the uh, on the markets yet. All right, so that's number one. So that'll act as the first magnet. A move up towards 18,000, as you can see, is is this is the first magnet. And that's my uh, 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 being a betting man. Of course, we're traders. We bet with our money. Um, you, you. This is that's what I'm looking for. The 18,000 move. All right, the 18,000 move. Um, the uh, as you can see here on the daily, um, we are still not fully oversold yet. So you know, I'm keeping an eye on that too. On the hourly, it's a different story. On the hourly. 
we are seeing these um, uh, reversal spikes here, which started at around uh, uh, three o'clock. Uh, I, 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 uh, based on my experience, those are in institutional margin calls uh, that are being satisfied, and we are heading back to what's going even on 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 the on the market right now. As we head into 3:30, as you know, the 3:30 is the margin sell-off hour too. So large amounts of stock are being sold um, to satisfy margin calls, and Again, there's no way you can game it, so you have to stick with the game. Let's take a look at the spies. The spies are looking pretty damn good to me. This is the daily on the spy, all right? Every indice is going to look a little bit different. You can see here on the daily, it's been buying all day long. This candle is green, 133 million shares so far. So we have, uh, we, 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 we tested yesterday's low, uh, and then we bounced stop. We break yesterday's low, we're going to come down to 204, 204, okay? Passing it on to 204. Now I can move this down here. There's a gap here at around 202. Do I think we're going to drop another 50 points? That's roughly another 400 points on the on the on the Dow right away. Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. But uh, let's see. So what's the natural magnet? And I've shown this before for the spies to move up to is uh, is is uh, up here, right here. Testing the testing the the blue lines. I'm sure hope you guys can see it. Uh, testing the down, uh, the the uptrend line, back test uptrend line. That's around 210. And then, like I've shown many times today, it's uh, going to be 211. That's the that's the retesting the 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 underbelly of the 34 and the 50. These are co getting quite oversold on the daily. So we li we'd like to see. Choose the color. One second. Got to get a color. That, I don't know how it went to blue. This is this needs to go like this. So maybe you know this is on the daily. Now let's let's take a look at um, levels that are posted. You guys can all study this and you'll see what's going on. Patience will take us up here on the stochastics. <clears throat> so buying a little bit lower or scaling in more, in my opinion, will be will be huge moves. So far, at this supports holding. We might slip here. We'll see what happens. Now let's look at the hourly. The hourly is again, it hit that level. It hit this level here, which was the lows of uh, of of uh, May 6th, and um, and then and and then we had uh, you know we had a reversal tail. We had a reversal tail, right? Now the Bollingers are pointing down towards the lower end of the scale at 204. Do we get down there? I don't know. This is starting to curl up. Again, it's a fluid market. Algos and machines are driving the market, so can't tell. I'm watching it really carefully. Buy some spy hedges. I'm putting it up there right after I get done with this. Again, the natural retest is 208, 207. Um, right here, these lows. Sorry. The natural retest would be the 34 and the 50 and the back test of the rising trend line. If we get up here, there's going to be a lot of volatility. Once we get up here, it, they, might, uh, they might sell the market off. I'm trying to get a pen here. OK, so if we get up here, it's possible that we make another move down. And that move might take us to 204. That would complete this type of symmetry, OK, and set us up for a nice move up towards the highs. Is it possible that this, this gets done? It sure is. Now, the other way you keep on looking at these things here, and these are important because you're trading all, a lot of these stocks within the context of what we're doing, or the, what the market's doing. That's the reason the market's moving around like this. Okay, you can be independent of the market when you're trading the individual stocks, even though some of them are very strong today. Um, is the fact that we are within a trading band. This is the first trading band. Okay, and this is the second trading band. And this is a big bomber's trading band, right? Down to 11980. This will happen. These will get tested. I just don't think, you know, nothing goes in a straight line. It'll, it'll be a volatility thing. So bottom line is, let me get that uh, highlighter. Uh, at this point, this is what the markets are doing. If you want to make it real simple, OK? So is it possible that we go back and test 213 and fail again? It is very possible. Quickly show you some charts. Is all this making a little bit of sense? Can everyone hear me? Okay, good. Um, let me pull a. Let me show you my charts um, on 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 this. This is uh, 
I need to refresh this. Hold on. Now, I want to warn everyone that at the end of the day, you see a spike and we're down 30 points. It means nothing. It just means nothing, okay? So, so that's just the way it is. Now, this is an hourly chart. Let's look at a daily chart. Daily chart of Netflix is telling me that if I stick with this trade right off this bottom here, I'm going to make tons of money. I've been making tons of money in Netflix, so it's fine with me. So that's the bottom line. If I stick with this trade, it still tells me that we have a fair shot to get up to around 680 right here. If not testing the upper end of the Bollinger, that's at 690. This is this is an excellent. Let me get all these lines out of here so people to give a longer swing view of Netflix. Um, we rode this wave all the way up here. We shorted somewhat, wish we had held on more, but still, it was still good. And at this point, um, look what we're doing. So this is telling us it's trying to bottom. Every single time it's come down to these levels, the stock has bounced. You have to follow the stochastics on this. There's obviously short covering going on. That's the reason why you have this green candle. And just a mini short cover will take us into this gap. Now, all this is shown in my charts. I'm just going to re-explaining that. And that's, that's the 670 mark that I'm looking at. Okay, the 670 mark that I'm looking at, right there. Twitter. Here's a, just a basic chart of Twitter. Twitter's looking pretty damn good. Right now, if it breaks this channel, and the, these calls are cheap, it's broken the channel. Oops, the red line appeared. You know where it appeared from? It appeared from my chart because I had it drawn before. So, right there, okay? So, you've seen this many times. So go study it. It's right there. So it's broken out of the channel. So what's the next logical step? The next logical step is this down, the first downtrend line. This is the second downtrend line. And I'm going to draw this in. Uh, and again, this is a patient trade. And it's going to yield some significant performance numbers and money. You have to stick with it. So at this point, uh, what I'm looking at is acceleration band up here and the Bollinger and the, and the retest of the downtrend line that's run 38.82. That's another $2.42 from here. A retest of the 34 and the 50 is 41 and 43. That's all you got to know. It's broken out of this descending triangle. So if you, you know, the, uh, sorry, descending channel. So again, if it reverses down and all bets are off, this thing is going to go to $28. So that can happen too, right? 28 is down here. But I'm showing you what's going on right now, period. Let's take a look at um, Tesla. Tesla is just beautiful. Tesla wants to close this gap up here at 277. You got eight points in the stock. One more the other, it's getting there. Yes, it's overbought, so what? It's it's overbought, it can stay overbought. Tesla has been hugging the upper end of the Bollingers for weeks now, for since April. It's just been sticking to the upper end of the Bollinger. That's called a powerful stock. Let's take a look at Priceline. Now this is this is Priceline without the lines and stuff drawn, right? So Priceline short is a little bit weird, but it did. Uh, if you look, if you, if you match it to my charts that I have there, I drew this because there was a gap here, right there. Okay, magically lines are appearing. Um, so it's a perfect triangle. All right. So at this point, it's right there. So any break above, uh, any break above this. Where's the highlighter? Any break above this brings you up to the 1190, 1200, 1180 level. So it's really as simple as that. Any break below this, we're looking at another gap, which is right here. That's around 1070, 1080. So if it completely reverses and falls into that, then you just got to be prepared for it. If it breaks 1110 uh, or 1100, it's going to 1080 real fast. Okay, now the internals are 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 showing you this. Uh, you can see it. It's starting to creep up. It's been a rolling, you know, it's been a rolling um, uh, lows. So it stayed oversold for a while, and wanted to fill this gap. It filled this gap. We would like to see these lines start to turn up. That's when price line basically moves up fifty, sixty, hundred dollars in a matter of a day or two. Okay, so we're okay with that. So that's it. I don't want to go too far in. I'm going to show you a quick picture of, uh, bear with me one second. 
So this is where we are on the e-minis, which I track in rabid fashion. Uh, and uh, oversold. These are very reliable. And every time it's oversold, this is the last time it was oversold, was run six. Uh, right there, there was a little bit more of a dip. And then see you later. OK? So um, let me let me zone in, um, zoom in here. This is it, green doji. Green dojis in my book are OK, because that's in decision. List. This was a green doji too, right off the bottom of the Darvis, right? So that's all right. What happened the next day? So if we have a big move tomorrow, you got to sell into it, period. Because the nervousness comes into Thursday, because Friday is a holiday, and God knows what happens on Sunday in Greece. We're not in Athens partying, right? So the market's going to retrace. So if this is the move that's going to get played out, then I'm showing it this to you right now, right there, right there, OK? So if we get a big up tomorrow, this, is, this one is right here off the bottom of the Darvis, and we have a big move up here, let's say towards the 2103 level, or oh, that would be quite a bit. Let's say into the, into the, into the uh, back testing, the downtrend, uh, uptrend line, which is 2080, that's about 30 points, 24 points. Do the math, 24 times 8, you're looking at S&P 192, that's another 200 points in the Dow. Don't get too giddy, okay? Take a fat amount of profits out. By that time, this will have moved up a little bit. And, uh, and and if this so this is the pattern that I'm looking at and then there'll be one more pull down there'll be one more pull down maybe a retest of these lows to make sure that this is a real low go up again retest again and then take off so if we're going to be doing this then get prepared well you guys are all prepared for some heavy duty volatility and take some nice profits along the way so there'll be a double so if we if this is the first one Let's say actually this is this is the second one. This is the one. It's right here. So this is number one. A move up. A move up is number two. Okay, so a move up would be number two up here somewhere. And then a move down to test these lows. That's number three. That's number three. And then you and then you get one more, you know, and then you sort of have another fake. Uh, uh, you get another fake move in this red candle, okay? And then you just take off. So from here, there'll be another fake move on the fake candle, and then you take off. I, that's probably what's going to uh, what's going to play out. And what where it's going to come? It's going to come to the top of this uh, of the uh, um, downtrend line right there. So let me just show it to you again, guys. And I'm going to wrap off right there so so to 2117 on the e-minis uh, up to about 2122 so that's around 2128 or so on the on the spies so let me just show you the SPX part and we're gonna wrap this out so the SPX right now is looking to gun up to 2090 move up is 2129 on the Darvis follow the Darvis and a real accelerated move would be 2143 I don't expect that to happen I believe that we might fail here at 2090, and if we bust through here, a retest of 34.50, the 34 in the 50-day line is 2107 on the on the S&P 500. So you got to keep this in the background as you're trading stocks in the foreground. Okay, end of story. How about Apple? It's a fruit. I put up enough Apple charts out there. I'm not going to cover it anymore, Val. Okay, you got to study the Apple chart, and uh, and 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 you'll um, you know you'll see it. But let me see if I still have it here. My Apple charts are very clear. Follow the fan lines. And let's see if I can pull this out. So even though I said it's a fruit, I'm still going to show it to you, Val. Okay? One second. Apple. So to me, Worst case scenario is 123. It's all there on my chart, so please study them. Because I'll tell you one thing, guys. By now, all of you need to really study my charts. And the ones who don't understand this, even though I draw it in the most simplistic fashion, then you take the group sessions, for God's sake. Because by the time you get out of them, you'll be PhDs in chart reading and draw your own charts too. So Apple right now, Val, is looking to go higher. A retest of the 34 and the 50 brings it up to these levels. I've posted those before. Any break below here? 
uh, would immediately drop oh, below 124.50, let's say, or 124.40, immediately drops it for over in, 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 in very quick order down to the 123.50. Otherwise, it's looking A-OK -okay in my book. All right? That's it. End of story. Everything is out there for you guys. Anyone who's not taken the group sessions, for God's sakes, take it for your own benefit. Don't be a stingy bum to save 30 bucks. And I spend two hours in there. My wife, by the way, is pissed off at me because I'm spending more than two hours on an hour session. And she's like, what the heck is going on? I said, because I love my members. Not really. I get carried on with what I'm doing. And uh, I wanted, I want, I, I'm very passionate about what I do. It's, it's done very well for me. I see no reason why it can't do well for others. Okay, as long as they can man, they manage their mental, uh, 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 what should I say, fortitude, their amygdala, and all those fancy terms, and stay disciplined. Don't get rocked around by listening to all the, all the idiots out there. And don't get too uber bullish. Don't get uber bearish. The U.S. markets are in fine order. It's just doing what it needs to do to make sure that none of you are on board when it takes off and makes new highs. So I'd like some of you to be on board to feel what it feels like to do some serious trades. That's it. Thank you for listening. I'll see you guys uh, later while I'll be in the, in, in the room. Bye.